stencils like these are the most common form of rock art found in Aboriginal Australia. And hand stencils like these are certainly an important element of traditional Aboriginal culture because every single person who ever lived has an obligation to apply their hand stencil to an overhang like this. Traditionally, if your child had been born literally on the Murrawindji lands, then the mother of that child has the right to stencil her little baby's hand stencil on one of these walls. By applying her baby's hand stencil here, she's making a very public declaration that my child is from this land. My child was born here. My child has a right to participate in the ceremonies. My child has a right to use the food and water resources here. And my child has the right to be on this country. Otherwise, the first time a child gets their hand stenciled here is the first time that mum brings them to Murrawindji to participate in a ceremony. In traditional society, both boys and girls spend their formative years exclusively with the women. If we want to teach traditional kids how to survive in this very harsh environment, the best people to pass on that knowledge are the women folk, because it's the women folk who are out there doing it every single day. So from the time children start to walk as toddlers and until the time they reach puberty, they spend their formative years exclusively with the women. So if I'm a young teenage boy present during one of those traditional gatherings, at some point during the proceedings, my father's brother is going to come and collect me and remove me from my mother's side for probably the first time in my life. My uncle is then going to take me away and put me in an isolated camp with all of the other young teenage boys. The same thing applies to girls, but we obviously keep boys and girls separate, in separate camps, because girls are learning women's business and boys are learning men's business. What those teenagers don't know is when they're out in that isolated camp, the women have hidden themselves in the bush around that camp because the women now want to watch very closely the behaviour of those individual teenagers. They certainly want to identify leadership traits that might be natural amongst some of those kids. And they certainly want to identify those kids who still might be a bit too immature. Send him back to mum, we'll put him through in 12 months when he's grown up a bit. But what those teenagers don't know is that they've been put out in that isolated camp to undertake a very specific test. And that test involves each day, each teenager going into that surrounding environment and collecting enough food to take back and feed all the rest of the teenagers back in the camp. And this is a way for those individual teenagers to prove to the women folk that they've listened and learnt to everything they've been taught about basic food collection, gathering and hunting. They should be able to do that very easily. Once they pass that test, the boys are taken away to the men's business place, the girls are taken away to the women's business place, they are then put through ceremony for the first time. Now that our teenage kids have gone through an initiation ceremony, they're now entitled to come to an overhang like this and apply their own hand stencil for the very first time. But because they've only been through one ceremony thus far, when they apply that hand stencil for the first time, they're only allowed to show that much of the hand because they've only been through one ceremony. Every time they go through subsequent ceremony, they're allowed to show a little bit more and so on and so forth. So obviously the only members of the tribe who've earned the right to stencil their entire forearms are elders, just like we can see here. So here is a female elder's forearm and the presence of this female elder's forearm is also warning us that we're very close in proximity and location to that women's business place. So obviously to create rock art like this, we need to create the traditional paint or the ochre. All of the ochre here at Murrawindji was brought here from the Flinders Ranges in South Australia. I'm mainly talking about the red and the yellow ochre. Black ochre and white ochre was found available just about everywhere. So the Adnia Mutna people over in the Flinders Ranges were bringing red and yellow ochre here when they were coming here to participate in ceremony. So this is what it looks like as a raw product. What we do is we crush this raw ochre up to a fine powder and then mix it with water in the first instance. But we always need to add a third and final ingredient. Some cultures in Aboriginal Australia used to use wild honey as their third and final ingredient. But for local peoples, we always used the animal fat from an emu, echidna or goanna. We use those three animals because of the high oil content of that animal fat. 
that oil content will bind our paint ingredients together and ensure that our paint sticks to the surface that it's being applied to. So I put the raw animal fat in my mouth first. The, the heat from my mouth causes the raw animal fat to melt. I then drink the water and ochre mixture and start swishing and swirling those ingredients together. I then place my hand against the wall of the overhang and blow the paint out of my mouth over the hand to create the stencil, <laughs> like so. So there are only four different types of rock art that are really possible in Australia. There's painted rock art, there's stenciled rock art, there's printed rock art and engraved rock art. And we're going to have a look at the four different types as we progress along these overhangs here at Murawindji.